Hello, everybody. Uh, those of you that are online with us, um, this is uh, Xavian's live stream of another play test of ours. Um, um, my name is Michael McMain. I am the CEO and founder of Xaviant and the creative director on uh, Lichdom. And I've got with me Ben. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Ben Collier. I'm a systems designer on Lichdom. So uh, Ben and I are going to be your hosts for tonight as we go through things. The uh, play testers that we have, and we only actually have two play testers tonight, Ben. Um, we had three scheduled, but one of them uh, was uh, got stuck in traffic or something, wasn't able to make it. So. Um, so we're going to have two play testers tonight, and uh, those of you that watched us last week compared to this week, a lot of what we did between these two weeks, this was kind of a tuning build for us. Um, for those of you that don't know, we're preparing for a uh, 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 basically a big announcement event that we're doing in um, uh, with, with AMD next week, um, and you'll see some details about that on our Facebook page or um, on our website, talking about... Um, uh, when you can tune in to find out more about that that cool announcement. So, so a lot of this is making sure that um, you know we all the things we tightened up are working like we expect, and uh, and also to make sure some of the things that we changed are sort of usability things to make sure that people you know get it right the first time or, or, or have less sort of fumbling around in certain areas. So, we'll see how that goes compared to to last week. But uh, you know, as, as Ben mentioned, he's big on the loot. And uh, in fact, just before the broadcast started, we were sitting and talking about all the Diablo changes, Diablo right? Diablo three and yeah, yeah. It's uh, be, both Ben and I love. He he's actually more of a loot cruncher than I am, right? You yeah. You tend to whenever you get into a game that's got crafting, you. I'm the min maxer. I like to dive into all of that. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So. Um, but uh, yeah, we're actually very excited about some of the Diablo 3 loot changes that they're talking about. That's going to be very interesting. So if you've uh, joined us for the first time tonight, feel free to type in chat and say hello. And uh, if you're joining us again, you can do the same. Um, we will answer questions that come in on chat uh, as you go through related to either gameplay or aspects of the, uh, the game. There are things that we will not be talking about um, specifically, uh, but uh, feel free to ask anything you want and I'll tell you if that's something that we can't talk about. So, um, so yeah, we, uh, we should have the testers here in a moment. So I'm going to go off mic for a second, and I'm going to make sure that we got everything set up, and then we will be back on and streaming.
All right, we're back. I, uh, we should have the playtesters in here in just a minute. They were finishing up their paperwork. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I don't know how many people we have on that have not seen this before, but we are going to be talking about not only stuff that's in this right now, um, but we'll be hinting at some things that are um, that are you know pl that we're planning to implement and how we're planning to implement them. And you're going to see a lot of playtests over the next couple of months related to that. So, um, so yeah, that'll be very exciting. Um, you know, Ben and I were just meeting today about uh, some of our uh, loot-based things that we're going to be over the next probably, s I guess, six w or seven weeks, right? Yep. Um, things that we'll be implementing and 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 our so our tests in that sense, the, the tests up to now for the past several weeks have been very strictly focused on this particular demo. Um, the coming tests are going to be more focused on very specific aspects of the game, right? Yeah, so we'll be able to try out new items and new loot systems that we're implementing right. and get feedback to find out what's what's working and what isn't. Right, right. And going a little deeper into the crafting experience. Yeah, a lot more experimental. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to, um, you know, playing with all the synergy stuff. That's uh, When we start getting that in there, that's going to be very, very interesting. All right, the plate testers are moving into their spots. You can see them on their little video feed there. So they will be clicking start demo here soon. And like I said, those of you that might have just joined us, uh, this is Xaviant's, uh, one, uh, we're streaming another play test here. It looks like, yeah, we have three play testers. Um, we, uh, um, I, I'm Michael McMain. I am the CEO, founder, and uh, of Xaviant and the creative director on Lichdom. And I'm Ben Collier. I'm a systems designer, mainly things to do with items and loot. Yeah, Ben's all about all the goodies that drop off of things when you kill them. Which means if I want something really cool in the game, he's the guy I talk to. Or more likely, <laughs> when you don't get the things that you want, you're yes. the guy that, I'm the guy that you come talk to. <laughs> That's right. How come I didn't get that? Right, so we see here they're pulling up their control scheme. Now, one of our testers, we don't have names on them this time. Um, as you can see, we just have uh, Lab 4, 5, and 6 up there in the little yellow text. Um, but the uh, the person at the Lab 6 station has actually played the game before. He played it at Siege, but that was obviously a much earlier version of what we have. So he, he should find a very different game experience here. Alright, so lap five is going to start heading in here. He's checking out the cool. He's like, what is that? That's pretty cool looking. Alright. So as we can see, what normally happens here, there's a little getting acclimated and looking around. And is going to be going into the area where he should start seeing some enemies soon. Checking out the, the flag and stuff like that. So that's one thing. Um, I can't remember if we had that on the last week play test, the um, globes that were placed throughout the level. I th think we did, but um, if, if we didn't have it last week, we changed it for, um, we, we added it last week, but uh, the, the way the health system works, so for those of you that maybe haven't seen anything about this before, the health system is represented on the left. It's a shield, um, actually, that you have, and in our, our lore, um, there is no magical healing. There's no magical way to preserve your life. Um, so in, in the way things work is you have this three-layered shield represented by those three uh, bars with pips in between them. And when uh, a pip takes damage, the shield will regenerate, that, that layer of the shield will regenerate. And subsequent um, uh, uh, hits, if you, if you lose the entire pip, like you see here, Lab 5 just lost his first pip, that will not come back now. He will regenerate the second one, but the third one will not come back unless he goes to one of those uh, orbs that you saw and uses it, then he can get a single shield pip out of it. 
another thing that we always tend to look for is to see how quickly people look find their defensive sort of move that we have, which is a blink ability. And, and uh, that's something we'd like people to discover on their own so we don't have to necessarily tell them. Let's see, I think we have some combat going on in uh, one of the other ones. Why don't you bring him up? Let's see what he's got going on here. So right now the players are restricted to fire and ice, I believe, and they will very quickly get three more spells that they have to choose from for their third slot, or they, they can choose any of those five for their, their three. Here you see some loot flying through the air. We actually don't have corpses that you loot or items that lay on the ground to loot. It's not really corporeal in nature, so right now it just kind of flies to the player and you absorb it. You'll notice kind of the standard coloring, the white loot, green and blue for the rarities, that type right. of thing. And despite creating the loot, I still manage to get really excited when a purple item flies yeah. out and I'm playing. <laughs> it doesn't spoil it for you, no. in other words. Let's switch up and see what uh, lab four. we've not looked at yet. Lab four, right? We haven't looked at him yet. This might be his second time in. I'm not 100% sure. If not, this is his first time to the little secret area here, right? So we have a lot of these little breakable things that, and we try to reward the player when you break stuff like that that is breakable by giving you a little chunk of loot that comes out of it. Something for the explorers that like to mm -hmm. go in every nook and cranny. Yep. Also, oh, we're starting with a single spell right now, with just fire. First, yeah, Lab 4 is the first guy that's been trying to do his hand at crafting. Let's see what, uh, he's got a couple of things here. He's got a green AOE shape. He's got a blue extended status target. So that would mean that his uh, damage over time from the fire would burn a little longer. Absolutely. Yeah. And how does that apply to, do, uh, to something like corruption? Do you know? Uh, the extended status, does that affect that or no? It would to like your freeze. It like does. Your it does affect the incubation time. It does. For okay. Which can be seen as a positive or a negative, I guess, depending right. on what you, how you're playing with it. So there, he's combined a few of the pieces of loot to create a new spell. Yep. So he's got an extended fireball because he used the extended status. We've so taken. We've taken the approach that. We don't really drop a sword or a bow necessarily, but we drop a nice piece of metal or a nice piece of wood, and then you get to choose how you want to put it together. Yeah, and that's a fundamental difference, right, in the way that we're approaching this, because we want all, you know, in Lichdom, we want it to be like you've got this chemistry set of magic, right, that your, your spells are, like, pulled from the periodic table, and then you're stripping off electrons and adding electrons and putting them together and see how they work. Yeah, um, Chris, who's on Lab 6, um, has played it before. All right. We're playing around with things here a little bit technically. So bear with us. So let's uh, switch over to and look at lab, what Lab 5 is doing. I'll switch that over in just a minute here. Do 
Do we need to make this a little bit smaller so we can see the peripheral players better? Isn't it? Or is it good? I don't know if that would affect the broadcast. All right, let's see. Um, okay, I don't, I don't know if I've seen anybody blink yet. I don't know if anybody's discovered that or how that works. Let's go back to the desktop multi-view. Let's kind of watch everybody at the same time for a minute and see if anybody seems to be using Blink. So I'm really curious. You know, last week people got onto it pretty quick. Oh, hey there. Uh, uh, Rashad, how you doing? It's good to see you again. So Rick, I guess you're saying you saw Lab Five. Um, you saw uh, uh, Travis use Blink. Yeah, there he went again. Okay, good. good using okay. it to get some distance. That's cool. Yeah, but here we go. And uh, um, Chris is using it as well in Lab Six. So we got um, Hank is doing some crafting now. He's got a frost spell. Looks like he's trying to craft an ice. What is that? What kind of is that? A rapid blast. Mm -hmm. So that's something that means his blast will come off faster. Yeah, we're doing really good, Rashad. We are, this is our sort of final play test before our uh, big event next week. We have a, a big event we're going to um, for with AMD that they invited us to on Wednesday of next week, so we're excited about that. This is kind of our, you know, making sure that this is the, the, the build that we're bringing with us, so we're making sure everything looks great. Man, that guy comes fast. And that was just coming after uh, Travis there. He moves quick. It looks like Hank and Chris on four and six have got the ice core now, so they're okay. adjusting their lineups and doing some crafting. Yeah, it was a, a blink followed by an AOE hitting that guy. This is the lieutenant that he's fighting here, so he's a little bit tougher. Yeah, and this will be, this will be when he gets rewarded with the ice for defeating this guy. Yeah, well, we're uh, in the, the uh, next week in Hawaii. There's going to be several of us that are there, and and uh, myself and uh, Josh Van Veld, our producer, um, is going to be on stage. Um, you guys will be able to watch our our announcement and our little presentation if you choose to cue into that next week. Yeah, I agree, Josh. The uh, a lot of the changes have have you know even though they've been very very slight, they seem to be helping a lot with the. Uh, the big one to me is when you start selecting or hovering over augments, you yeah. get to see a preview of the stat changes, and right, it really makes the connection. One of the things that we still have to do, because you notice there's a lot of confusion right now, and um, since he's dragged a, a shape there, you end up like he needs to go to augments mm -hmm. now. And if you look at uh, Travis's Lab 5 um, thing, he needs to get down to the augment area. You know, uh, Rashad, so Rashad just asked a question if the cracked ice is done through tessellation or if it's actually modeled. I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, that is a good question. That would be one for our effects guys. But you know what might be good when we, when, when the forums are more active, obviously we can answer some of those questions in the forums. In fact, somebody might be watching. Um, yeah, so if somebody, or Jeremiah, yeah, if somebody knows that answer, that's part of Xavier, feel free to jump in there and answer that question. It's got some long range action going there. It's always exciting when you see somebody crafting spells, right? 
yeah, Chris here is about to make an extended status ice spell for a targeted spell, and those are one of my favorites. You get yeah. to extend the slow or the freeze on the yeah. guys. Yeah, you can end up with like a five or six second freeze, right? Exactly. And we had had a problem too before where that didn't reflect the the remember the the extended status in the shape did not reflect in the data but i think that's fixed now right yes should yeah, be that's cool a couple more blues that's always again it's very exciting when you get that. although travis is creating an aoe gravity spell with the extra wide aoe okay so that could be really cool too yeah. especially with the critical effect of right. gravity and gravity is one of our spells that Unlike, say, the elemental spells, it doesn't behave the same for the different shapes. So you actually get a slightly different behavior out of it. Like the cone is a push or a knockback, and the um, target is a lift um, or a slam if it crits. And then the AOE is kind of like a singularity that pulls things together and then causes a, a, a burst of damage that explodes things back out again after it pulls them in. So yeah, the wide AOE could be very interesting in that. So Travis is trying out his new AOE uh, stuff that he made. Look how big that is. Wow. <laughs> that's huge. And that's the gravity effect yeah. we were just talking about. That's really, really big. And one of the things, you know, we haven't really played around too much with difficulty except for the fact that we try to balance this slightly so that our, you know, players that see it for the first time can have what we think should be an enjoyable experience. But um, ultimately, the harder difficulties mean that your own AOEs will affect you. They will you know, the, in the harder difficulty. Um, Rashad has a, a comment here. The crafting system looks incredible. Love how it specifically details the different aspects of each spells down to so, yeah, um, yeah. We're really happy with how that's coming out. That's been a lot of spent a lot of time working on that. Um, yeah, see, uh, Travis just used that AOE gravity to pretty good effect right there. That was that was pretty interesting. Here he's gonna use it again. Look at how big that is. That's huge. Oh, he just missed those guys. They didn't. They weren't quite in it. It's like he's mixing ice and gravity right now. Yeah, thanks, Booker, for the comment. We appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's very effective there. Someone at range hassling him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Somebody else experimenting with gravity here. Looks like uh, Chris is playing around with it a little bit. Yeah, as Josh mentioned here, you know, he's saying can't wait for the audio streams. The gravity AOE is an example of a spell that the sound is almost as good as the visuals. I agree. It's the sound makes really, really sells it, and uh, um, we should have that hopefully pretty soon. Um, we're getting that work done in the lab in order to get there. Here we have Chris made a blast version of gravity, and blast is kind of like a frontal cone in front of you that goes off in a quick burst. So we get to see a nice contrast with the AOE. So one of the cool things I think that we can maybe tease a little bit, see this is one of the neat things about when I'm in here, I can tease stuff and I can't get in trouble because nobody will yell at me, <laughs> except maybe the lawyer if I say something I shouldn't. Um, before I do that, though, Rashad has uh, coming up. It looks like the game that focuses very much on immersion through the incredible art and style. Yeah, that is, you know, one of our, our, our sayings that we um, quote is, you will feel everything. And so our goal is full immersion as much as possible, right? To, so the player can stop thinking about keyboards and mice and controllers and things and, and, and be deeper in the game. Um, is that an orange piece of loot? Looks like it. That's pretty awesome. Got a legendary. The That's first the first one legendary I've seen in the game. That's cool. 
That's really cool. I didn't see what it was. I think it's a cone, right? It looked like it was a cone. I only caught it out of the corner of my eye. I couldn't, couldn't tell for sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> Josh is panicking now. Um, no, so uh, for those of you that don't don't or, you know haven't played the game, obviously it's hard to tell this sometimes. But the way that our spell casting works, so as you can see, the player is not bound by mana. They're not bound by cooldowns either. What you're bound by is your, basically your animation time. It's how long does it take you to cast a spell. And we're trying to take a somewhat unique approach because we're trying to show what it would be like to just be this immensely powerful mage that has magic sort of uh, indisposable at his fingertips, but the complexity is in you know, how long it takes you to put down your AoE versus how fast you can do a target versus a cone or a blast. And uh, so one of the things that, that we do here is um, if you cast a spell normally, then all spells are subject to a normal, what we call a critical hit, right? So everything has an inherent chance, and I think by default it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 5%, That's right? right? Um, and those critical hits will happen randomly. So you see as uh, uh, on uh, Lab 4, who is... Uh, Hank. Hank, thank you. Um, Hank was uh, chain casting his fire spell. Obviously, every time he casts that, he has a chance, of, a 5% chance of the, one of them being a crit. However, the player has the option to power up the spell or hold the button down that you're using to cast it. And after holding it for a specific amount of time, which is anywhere in the range of one second to a couple of seconds, depending on the shape of the spell, um, it will result in a guaranteed critical. So you can do things like if you need your frost spell to freeze somebody, you can force that into a crit by charging it. And one of the things that we are planning on implementing eventually is what we call apocalypticals, which are critical criticals. And so um, we're going to be after, uh, in, the, in the coming next you know, five or six weeks, you're going to see some of that. Yeah, you're right, Josh. Um, Josh is saying that all the players are at the same point. That's, that's not very typical either. They're usually in very different stages from each other. So we got um, Hank is using uh, corruption a bit, I see there. Now, those of you that can see that um, right now, the when you lose a shield pip, there's sort of a blast, kind of like the blast that emanates from Sauron when he died in uh, Lord of the Rings. I just spoiled the beginning of that movie. Uh oh. Anyway. Um, but uh, um, and and so that happens when you lose a shield pip. This is something that we currently have implemented for the shield because right now the player doesn't get to make any choices in shield, but um, the. Uh, the, the, the player is also going to be able to make some of those choices, and that's some of the, one of the things that we can hint at a little bit. So why don't you talk a little bit about what yeah, we're planning on doing there. Very much the way the player can customize their spells, we want you to have the same freedom on your shield. You could be someone who likes a shield that regenerates really quickly, or one that has more health, and so you'll be able to make those choices with the, the augments, the way that you combine the items to make your shields. And we'll be able to get the cool effects like the exploding shields like we have now, or there could be shields that say have spikes and that when the enemies hit you they take right. damage or lots of options there. Yeah, and that's cool. So the player will be in more control and some of those properties like this particular property you see here, that might be a random rare effect that you get out of the crafting experience. So when you craft your shield, right, your defensive shield, you've uh, used your augments to you know, configure it in a certain way, right? To, to make it either a certain size or resistance to certain elements and so forth and so on. But then one of the random outcomes could be, depending on how you build it, maybe you have the opportunity to get varying degrees of this uh, pulsating effect. So, um, so Booker is saying that uh, chat room commentator is funny. I think they might be talking about you. I think you're funny. Oh, I think they're. I I'm funny looking, but they oh. can't see me, so they must be talking about Josh. Josh, no, Josh, he is. He's a, he's a laugh a minute. So those of you that might have just joined us, um, my name is Michael McMain. I am the CEO, founder, and uh, of Xaviant, and uh, this is our first game, Lichdom, and I'm the creative director on Lichdom. And I'm Ben Collier. I'm an item a systems designer on Lichdom, focusing mainly on items and loot, because those are the things that I love about games. <laughs> We take a lot of inspiration from, obviously, games like Diablo. You can't really like loot games and not have played Diablo, but right. other games like Borderlands or MMOs like EverQuest or World of Warcraft. Right. Something that excites most of us. 
I've always wanted to be the guy that all the players hated because of the loot that they didn't get. And right. I finally had my chance. Yeah. Right, so let's see. No, he's using this rare. Oh, that's an AoE, right? And what is that? What the crippling is a it's kind of a bigger version of extended status. It's a fifty percent status. Oh, duration. wow. That's huge. Then. So it's especially good on crowd control Wait, spells. What did, so what did like, he make with He it? made Corruption. Oh. Which means he could get some really big stacks of yeah. Corruption going. Yeah, and it's an AoE, which is a little harder to pull off, right? It's, it's a little tougher to do that. Like, the targeted version of that would be Although I very, think if he, uses them, if he uses them together, if he opens with an AoE, I think he could then continue with targeted to add Right, because it's already, uh, it's already automatically a long incubation time. So for those of you that, that don't know about um, uh, how some of these spells work, Corruption is not really a dot. That's what you might think at first, that it's like a you know decay over time or something. But Corruption is actually a reverse DD, meaning that it's a direct damage spell, but it incubates. So it does have a small dot component to it. That's kind of just to let you know that it's there, right? That it's percolating. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that you've planted these like seedlings of insects inside the host and they're growing. And when they mature, they burst and attempt to uh, erupt out of the individual causing damage. And if the person dies at the moment of burst, and you can cause that burst to happen by hitting them with another direct damage spell, right? Like ice or lightning or fire. And if you force that and that burst causes them to die, then a certain percentage of those uh, hosted insects fly out and then they're on the battlefield and they'll fly out and seek out other enemies to infect. So it can become a very, very powerful spell once you learn how to use it. And you'll see Chris on Lab 6 is using it, so maybe we'll see him successfully explode some enemies with it. So yeah, Josh and uh, Rashad were talking about the water and, and uh, Rashad asked if it's always deadly. Yes, it is always deadly and we shouldn't have too many places you can fall into it, but I can't guarantee that's not the case if you try hard. So he did get his AoE to come off. Um, Travis did. He, uh, yeah, he's getting it to, to come off there. That's cool. You can see that yeah, he's got it erupt, oh, yeah. but it didn't kill the enemy, so we didn't see. Yeah, he's got to. Yeah, he's got to get it to kill him in order for it to really, truly. There, we can see one of the things just came over there, and now he's. I couldn't tell if he had any uh, come out of him or not. Some of them might have popped earlier. Look, looks like there's one flying around the top of the screen there. Yep. Couldn't mm -hmm. find a target yet. Boss. Oh, yeah, you got the. Uh, Hank is at the boss there. So we've got a health bar in the boss now. We haven't had that in the past. So this should help players. Uh, get a better idea of where they're at and how much damage they're doing at a given moment. One of the challenges that we have with the boss, the way our mechanics work, is that um, if you do things to the boss, like here he just froze him, that's a crowd control. If you do anything like that, he will eventually enrage if you do it too much. And once he enrages, he's immune to it. Like right now, he's just, I think, no, he's, he's still coming close to enraging. We must have played on oh, no, he's enraged now. So now that he's enraged, he can't be CC'd and he does a lot more damage. So it's going to be pretty close. It's going to be very, very close. Oh. Ooh, ooh, very, very They're close. They're both on their last legs. Yeah. He got nice. him. Yep, he got him. Oh, look at all the loot. Yeah, it's a purple and a couple blues in there. Awesome. Oh, but he can't use it now. So, um... Books we have not, Books 91, we have not uh, given out the release date yet. However, we are making a big announcement in the middle of next week on a, uh, AM, at an AMD event in uh, Hawaii. And uh, if you stay tuned on our Facebook page, we'll tell you when to tune into that stream and you can uh, watch the presentation or just keep an eye on our website and we'll, we'll have that up there next week.
Oh, there was a release date spoiler in that. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess when the boss dies, when we come up to the thing, it says something about when the game is coming out. Good job, Ben. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pretend that I knew that and I did yes. that on purpose. I like the way these undead guys are, are looking. The character art is really solid on them. And, and I like there's been some changes, too. I see some tweaks in the way the frost effects look, and that looks really, really yeah, good, that's, too. it's the best it's been. Yeah. Uh, so Booker's asking a question. What Last week was the boss harder. It didn't take him a bit longer. Are there new spells that are stronger? It's possible that the loot is a bit better than last week, right? There was some fine-tuning on the loot. Because um, I noticed, like, uh, it seemed like a lot more blues in people's inventory than last week. But most likely, the guiding factor is, um, I, I think his enrage might have been played with a little bit. I don't, I'm not 100% positive on that, though. Because I was surprised he didn't enrage a lot faster when he was being frozen over and over again there. And Ben's brother-in-law, I wonder who that is. Interesting, I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, says everything looks awesome. And well, thank you. I know he was proud of me, not you. So, I, we'll nice. both share the credit, even though neither one of us has made any of the art. <laughs> That's right. Game. That's but, right. Uh, the art is amazing. The art, the oh. art team, those guys. I, I sit at my desk and work for a week or two without seeing the art updates every day, and then I take a look at the game, and I'm blown away myself. I know. Constantly. I walk back by and I see somebody playing, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Travis is using a bit of lightning I see there too. You don't see that a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Chris is doing a little sightseeing off the edge. Ooh, he almost got jumped. But he saw him at the last minute. Yeah, um, to Josh's comment, he's saying that um, he doesn't think we changed the balance significantly. Might be, be seeing difference in play styles. Um, it'll be interesting to find out. Jim is actually um, observing the play testers and, and forming questions, and he would he would know best about if anything changed within Rage. Um, but uh, but like I said, it seemed like he he froze him quite a number of times, and he didn't seem to enrage. But that could just be a chance. But we did have somebody beat the boss on the first time last week as well. All right, so um, Travis is getting close to the boss. He's in the inner sanctum. Hopefully he'll use that shield pip. I don't know if he, if he completely, I don't know how well we broadcast to the players what that is. They know to use it. That interior space looks really, really good. Okay, there he's. He got there, but it might not be. Oh, there he used it. Okay. It's always something that you you know sort of wonder and kind of worry about. It's like, do do we do a good enough job of telling people what to do there? Are they. Okay, he's throwing down his singularity on him. I think did he just? Oh, no, he got him. Okay, so it moved him. Doesn't throw him around quite quite like the smaller enemies, but mm, it's still effective. Yeah. Okay, he's already enraged. Now see, he enraged really fast there that time. When he enrages, man, it's it, you really gotta stay out of his face. It can hurt bad. So as Michael's been talking about the enrage mechanic, the reason we have that is we want you to be able to use all of your magic against the bosses rather than artificially say, oh, this guy can't be stunned or frozen or mm -hmm. moved around. Exactly. There's nothing more frustrating than you spend all your time like perfecting this build, right? And it's like, oh, I can do all these cool things, and then you get to a boss, and it's like, sorry, those are all turned off because they're too powerful on the boss. And especially with our crafting system, one of the interesting decisions you're gonna have to make, you're gonna get some really rare loot. But you have choices. I can make a fire spell with this. I can make an ice spell. Right. So then, when you finally decide to invest all of that in a really good ice spell, and then you couldn't freeze the boss. Right. Travis is trying to mix it up right, oh, but unfortunately it was right at the last minute, but he's trying to mix it up right there at the end there. 
It looked like he realized that when the enrage was on, his ice wasn't being very effective, so he was yeah. going to switch it out. Yeah, he switched it out, looked like, for a corruption and a fire, is that right? Boom! I like how he enters now too, right? <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, one of the differences that you'll see between last week and this week was when you walked into the uh, uh, the boss's area last week, there was like this little, I don't know, mini cutscene moment where we pulled the attention of the player away as we zoomed in on the boss that was standing there. And uh, and it's funny, we had a play tester comment on that, that that was um, uh, d disruptive to him. And that was actually one of the things that I set pretty early on as a rule to say that we will never pull the person out of their first person perspective, right? They're gonna stay in it all the time. And so uh, I kind of felt we had let him down at that point. I'm like, right. we, gotta, we gotta get that out of there because we're not gonna do it. We're not, we know we're not gonna ship the game that way. And so we, we put this back and then that's actually much more yeah, epic, right? When it, it comes is. flying in the lands like that. Um, so Rashad has a question in terms of gameplay, is it a full-fledged RPG or is the RPG system a back setting to the arena combat. Um, well, it's a full-fledged system in the RPG in the sense that you know you're building sort of your your persona through the the loot and the spells that you have. So it's an RPG in the sense of the same way that like uh, you know a, a Diablo might be an RPG or a um, uh, you know you could imagine this being or yeah or a Borderlands or something like that. But um, and there is a story to the game, but it's not an open world sandbox type of RPG like a Skyrim or something like that. Um, it's really more about you focusing on your character and the combat while we have spaces obviously what you've seen here is very very tailored and very linear. A lot of our other spaces are, are a little bit more open with with some sort of different options of the path you want to take through the event or through the level. However it is still tailored combat so um, and, and uh, it lets us give a more interesting more uh, more sort of more focused and organic flow to the to the combat. So, um, yeah, and this demo here, of course, doesn't have any of the content or story content or exactly. quests, exactly. but those will be in the game. Yep, that's correct. He's getting them close. be interesting to know if they could tell that there was an enrage, you know, this sort of enrage oriented mechanic or not, because that's something that we've had a hard time sort of selling. A lot of people thought that it was just happening no matter what, mm -hmm. or... Nice use of a blink there to... Yeah. It was weird. It looked like the uh, shot disappeared. It's getting a good bunch of hits off of that um, AoE. Yeah, uh, Josh has a good point, saying that the viewers at home can't hear it because we don't have the, the sound stuff in our, our uh, lab hooked up yet, but the uh, user is getting audio aid from, from a, a helper, so that might be helping to communicate the enrage. Ooh, nice. Oh, he did get hit by that one. I thought he almost dodged it. It's close. Very close. You see the look of determination on his face. Turning your back on the boss is a very scary proposition, isn't it? I think I'm more tense when he does that. I do. Too, I do too. I get. I, I get very scared. Oh, that might be enough to get him. Let's see. Yeah, I think you can get him from here now. Yep. Yes. There he goes. Great. Ooh, look at that! Another. That's that's two epics for him. Yeah. He won't be able to I use. I want to know what that is. Then. What was that? What was that orange? Um, I would tell so you, but you're gonna just have to play for yourself. So. Yeah. So Rashad has a question, how expansive is the environment? Is it like Diablo in terms of a one large space filled with enemies or do you favor a map, uh, are you favoring a map system? So we have a map system um, and I would say it's, it's probably somewhat similar to Diablo in that sense that you know, we have very, very large maps um, that we utilize the area very effectively. 
Um, and then there's there's multiple of those in the games with multiples. So like you're, what you're seeing here is called gray teeth, and this is a, sort of a frozen tundra type of uh, you know uh, mountainous area. And we have another one that's like a swamp, and, and all of them are very very large. So what we're going for is uh, pretty much like a thirty uh, somewhere between thirty and forty hours of uh, gameplay as you play through the game the initial time within a, you know, a much more expansive amount when we open it up for you to, to make boss runs and do that kind of stuff to continue to loot. Yeah, that's what we're going for, is, is a nice big area, but still tailored gameplay. Um, that, that's a little easier for us to pull off. You know, the sandbox experience is, is pretty tough to do, right? And uh, the tailored gameplay is a little bit easier for us to do, and it lets us really focus on, because gameplay is our number one priority. The spell casting has to feel like spell casting. And so we put a lot of work into that. Geez, probably a year's worth of effort just Easily. into that alone, um, playing with different options. And we feel really, really good about where it's at right now. So let's see, has everybody beaten the boss now? I know that the guys that beat the boss went back and have played or started over again, but I can't remember if we had three people that beat the boss or if we have one. I think we've only had two. Yeah, thanks Rashad. We, uh, it'd be uh, interesting when you get to try it and uh, see how it is. remember if Chris has been to the boss yet. I don't think he has. I don't believe so. He's got a nice system going right now with the ice to freeze them, gravity AOE, and then a... And then a cone then of a, fire. Yeah. yeah, nice. So I'd mentioned this last week, but I'll, I'll mention it again um, and to, to talk about a little bit more, and that's the what we're doing with synergies. I hinted at it earlier, but I didn't really uh, talk about it. So the idea that we're going for is that ultimately, you know, I, I had mentioned that our spell crafting, you know, our spell system, we want it to be like a chemistry set. So what we've got is our periodic table, if you will, of spells is actually very small. Um, our plan is to release with a very limited number of spells, but they are all distinctly different from each other. I mean, very, very different from each other. But then what you do is, is you, through your crafting and your manipulation of the different properties um, using your augments, you um, can cause spells to behave differently when they interact with each other. Were you going to say something interesting about what happened? Another legendary came out. So. Oh, another legendary, nice. Um, and so when you... Um, uh, when you're uh, uh, building your spells, you're trying to make it so that the way your fire, like say, for example, works with corruption would be different. So, And in order to achieve what we call synergies, you have to build your fire a certain way, then build your corruption a certain way, and then uh, equip your spell banks in a certain way that they synergize with each other. And then your fire, your, let's say your targeted fire spell, when you force a critical effect on that, um, uh, let's say, for example, you would start with your corruption. In this case, the corruption would be an opener. You attack with your corruption, forcing a crit. And then when you hit with a subsequent fire critical, because of the way the two of them are built, the bugs that burst out of the guy are flaming insects that then you know ignite other people on fire for a higher damage over time in addition to being infested and so forth. So let's see, he got a crippling blast. Okay. And it's interesting watching him craft here shows me maybe another piece of polish we could have for the crafting system. He's taken to using a regular blast shape and the crippling blast shape so he can switch them in and out to see the difference that the crippling blast uh, would make. Because yeah, yeah. unlike the augments, before you have a shape, the spell doesn't have any stats, so you can't really get a predictive. Right, right. Yeah, we're still in the process. You know, we, we, we wanted to get this close enough that at least for next week, um, when people are using it, they can they can get through it. But there's still a few tweaks here. Because one thing I was thinking we could do is imagine this list interface in each of these areas. 
Yeah. Then you can just go up just and down, up and down, right there in the shape, and then yeah, go to the augments and then go up and down on each one of them. That or, or one of the ideas was to keep the long list on the left, but then maybe the sections would collapse. Once you pick right. a core, it collapses. You can still go back up to the cores and expand it. Now I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's coming up to the part where he gets teleported to the... Right? I can't remember. To the POS area. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe Chris has, has fought the boss yet. I haven't seen him do it, so... If he did, he did it so fast and got back here so fast that yeah. and I don't think that'll be the case. Let's see, I can't remember if there's a couple of guys up here. I think there might be. Yeah, he's got this area here. I can't wait till we get enemies that do things like freeze you solid, yes. right? Or pick you up and throw you, right? That's going to be really, really interesting. So Rashad has a question about the uh, replayability. He's saying, what's the status of the replayability aspect? Can those 30 to 40 hours still be of entertainment after the first time? Yeah, our goal is to, again, it's kind of that Diablo 3 model, right? You complete the game. And then you basically unlock a world that you can progress through the levels to fight different versions of the bosses, much tougher versions of the bosses that have different loot tables, and you continue to grow in power. So the real ultimate levels of power are about, um, uh, you know, sort of running those bosses over and over again, trying different things, and, and uh, you know, we have ideas on how to make the world more difficult, not just beefing up hit points. I mean, obviously that's going to be a component of it, but it'll be things like, you know, getting to a point where you're fighting two of those uh, undead hulks at, at once, that type of thing. Yeah, Rashad's asking some good questions. But yeah, the, the idea is that our loot system is deep and rich enough. You know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the, the stream, at the broadcast, Ben is the kind of person that loves to spend, what, how many hours of crafting and loot-based stuff, right? Uh, and and he's, uh, so he's very much interested in making sure that there's a significant amount of time you can sink into that, right? Yeah, so the player like me that really wants to push every system to the edge, you can't really do that in the first playthrough. The first right. playthrough, everyone should get a good taste of all the systems, but right. for the person who really wants to maximize everything and have the have much bigger challenges, right? you'll be able to keep going. Yeah, so Chris is now facing the shielder, which is a challenging opponent. She shields her allies. And that shielding makes them impervious to uh, control effects too, right? You can't freeze them while that shield is up and so forth. I think that's correct. We should, yeah, nice satisfying corruption explosion. Yeah, on that that's guy. always nice. Now she has no one left to shield but herself. Yeah. So she's not quite as deadly when she's alone. But Yeah, her shield looks looks much, much better. I love the way those undead guys crawl out of the ground. They look really cool. Nice. Yeah. I, had, I didn't notice, did Chris build his, did he use, consume his uh, epic? When he made a spell, I, I could, that was a blast, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, so he finished that, so now he's going to be, I think, in the interior, right? Yeah, so now he's coming up to the boss. Rashad has another question here. Are your design plans prepared for the possibility of after-release uh, map releases? Can the community contribute by designing their own? That's a really good question. Um, the uh, Yes, our plan, we definitely have some DLC plans. 
um, which will include uh, not only maps, but you know, new content and interesting content and, and possibly even in, in the existing maps. And then um, in addition, our plan is to not, probably not on the day we release the game, but shortly after, to, uh, to do like a Steam, uh, uh, what do you call it? Steamworks. Yeah, Steamworks uh, thing, because you know, that's something that is kind of built into the CryEngine, that, that we can offer some ability for players to create their own custom content. We're not quite certain yet what, at what level and extent you're going to do that, but our plan is to try to push that as far as we can. Yeah, that's one of the great things working with CryEngine. Mm -hmm. The tool set for for, mod, for making mods and creating your own content. But we would be very excited, for example, if we can create a situation where players can make their own spells, you know, uh, possibly even add their own loot and you know things like that. That would be very, very exciting. But yeah, it'll be nice when we do things like, you know, we can have rarity filters on the loot, you know, so you can say, I just want to see my purples, right? I want to see what I got that's purple or better. So he's giving himself a, a rapid wide AOE with some extra, extra damage. Punch. Yeah. yeah. And have you, how much work have we put into the naming of the spell? Like, is there a lot of, you know, a lot that goes into that right now, or is it still, is it easy to get an overlap, is what I'm getting at? Uh, they the should names. be, they should be all, they should pretty much all be unique, you know. There's no, if fire with targeted versus fire with blast versus yes. AOE. Okay. And then we also pass on some of the name of the shape into the spell so that right. you can identify what you've made. He goes through the door. L skills ask, is that the orange crippling blast? Yeah, I believe that is the the orange shape that he had. And I think crippling is just is a really souped up version of the extended status effects. So it's really good for anything that leaves a damage over time or freezes or disables an enemy. Yeah. I think he, he almost built it, but I, I, I don't think he used it. Yeah, looking at his lineup now, it looks like two blues and a green. Yeah. The colors you see on the spell icons on the HUD indicate the rarity of the shape that went into the crafting. Right. There will be a little bit more to that eventually, but... was a pretty nice AoE fire that got a lot of damage in. Yeah, his AoE fires do that that um and that's is that the one that he that's built the with the rapid them? wide. The rapid wide, yeah. The boss really closes the distance when he's fast. enraged, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things we tried to do to make that slightly more difficult. Also that you notice that when he's enraged that AoE slam or that little that puts that symbol down that stays for a while as a status effect that if you walk into it you're going to take damage. It did seem like he was being pretty selective with his crowd control, which is a good, mm -hmm. good tactic. What we're seeing here, you, you lose a boss fight or you die to an encounter, and then you immediately go into your loot and your crafting and see what else mm -hmm. you can whip up. And this is one of the key parts of the gameplay loop for us. You're always motivated to try something different or get something a little bit stronger to. Ben, do we have one. rarities of augments in right now, or are they all flat right now? Right now, we just have two tiers of augments. Two tiers, okay. So you made himself a fire spell? Yeah, so this is an excellent spell to use crippling, crippling yeah. prefix on. Although it's a bit of a double-edged sword against the boss, because the it longer is. you keep him slowed, the quicker the he's going to get enraged. Rage, yeah. 
And this has a 10.5 second frozen du duration right now. Right. Use the strongest augment and the orange shape. Yeah, what we need to do to, um, uh, so let's see, Rashad has another question he wants to ask for the tech guys. Oh, look up, I'm sorry, I guess I missed it. Um, speaking of CryEngine, have they made any official exporters for open source engines like Blender 3D? I don't know the answer to that, but some of the people that are on the chat with you might, some of our uh, employees there. So if any of you guys know that, please uh, feel free to jump in and answer his question there. So one of the things I was thinking that we need to make sure that we do is, and we may not be able to make it a significant uh, change, but what I would like to see is that if I have a five second freeze and I freeze the boss two times in a row, that generates much more rage than if I freeze him once for 10 seconds. Not, not much more, but it generates more. It might be ten percent. You know, I mean, in other words, right. you might get ninety percent. You know, ten percent less rage or twenty percent less. But the the point is that there's a value in spending that big augment with that big thing because you're getting a little bit. You know, because part of it is the one time cost. Just yeah, for him. yeah. Because you're and then you're getting some. You know, some return on that investment, right? So that that's a good point. Um, now that that I'm sh it's possible that uh, Jim is in there taking notes right now. But if he's listening to the stream, he may be, be like. Ooh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. But that's something we'll definitely implement as we go forward. And when you see the guy fall to his floor, for, uh, for us, this is something that's still kind of a work in progress, but that's our concentration system. So the idea there is as you're hitting enemies, some of your spells that have impact on them are causing sort of concentration damage. And it's a two-edged sword, meaning the the uh, enemies can cause concentration damage to you as well. So if you're holding a spell charge and you want to let it go off and a guy starts hitting you with a pole arm, he may, if he overcomes your ability to, to uh, concentrate, knock you out of your spell and then you have to start casting it again. And that is um, uh, something that will come in when the defensive itemization comes into play. So we see here, uh, Chris went back out after his death, did a, did a bit of crafting, Used a couple of his rare pieces and has come in and just, just completely owned the boss. Him. Yeah, just slaughtered him. So that's great. That's a good feeling when you can do that. And there's a look at another orange. That's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So um, they're going to uh, go and pull off of that there. And they're going to um, fill out their questionnaire. And um, then the Playtesters will be coming in here. We'll be activating a camera for them to, so that you can see them, and you can listen to Josh, our producer, ask them some of the questions that the designers have collected while they were watching people play. So, um, Tim Lindsay stepped in here with us. You've been taking some notes in there. How did, how yes. did the note taking go? Did you? Did it went pretty well. Yet? We got to work on the process a little bit, but we have um, we were able to put together uh, three custom questions for each. Oh, uh, nice. Specific to their experiences. Perfect. Um, things that really focused on um, understanding the UI. Um, what I think we need to, to talk to these guys about if they understood the different components, like right. the core versus shape versus all. Okay. And then um, talk to them a little bit about um, if they really understood the different mechanics going from spell to spell. Right. Corruption versus fire, right? Okay. Um, so those are some of the things we want to hammer on a bit. Yeah, Rashad, Chris really, he, after he uh, did that little bit of crafting, he came in and completely mm -hmm. owned that boss. That was awesome. It's really cool to see that. It's the second time I've seen that today. Earlier today, we had another tester come in, uh -huh. Aaron, uh, sort of a, a studio favorite. He yes. came in, uh, got a plus five to destruction, and oh. wrecked the boss, lost one pip, and first try. Had never seen the boss. Oh, and that's wrecked cool. It. And uh, so I told him um, he is our de facto hard mode tester moving forward. Right, right, cool. Um, awesome. All right, I think we're going to move these guys in here actually pretty quickly today. Okay. Um, so. All right, so I'm going to retreat to my desk and I'll log in there. I'll, I'll answer any questions. I'm going to be watching the stream myself and watching the debrief of the play testers. And um, if you have any more questions, I'll try to answer as best I can. Um, I know uh, 
Tim, I don't know if you can answer this question that Rashad had it? here. He's talking about the CryEngines. You know, have, have they made any official exporters for open source engines like Blender 3D? Do you know the answer to that question? Mm, I don't. I'm afraid I'm not that guy. Yeah, and I don't know if there's anybody that's online right now that can answer that. The only thing I know is there's a Google has a free 3D modeling tool, the SketchUp. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a, a suite of tools called PlayUp tools that. Among the, among the engines they can export to are CryEngine. Okay. They talk about a lot of that at the CryDev forums where all the modders live. I see. That's a good place to check that out. Okay. Awesome. All right, so they are pulling the testers in here, so Ben and I are going to vacate. And uh, thank, thank you, you guys very for much. Watching. Yeah, we appreciate it. Hello. Hello. All right. So once again, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming out and playing the game with us tonight. This is Tim, our design director. Hello. I'm Josh. I'm the producer on Lichdom, which you were just playing. So we're going to have a little discussion about the demo that you guys just played. And, and really, we, you know, to be honest, we're really looking for stuff that's wrong with it, you know, more than stuff that's right. If you guys want to give compliments, that's fine. <laughs> um, but we want to, you know, if you notice something that wasn't quite right, we're going to want to dig into those things a little bit. And I encourage you to share with us if something didn't sit quite right with you. Don't assume, oh, it's my style, and I, you know, whatever. Like, tell us what you think. Uh, so, Chris, let's start with you. Why don't you just give us your kind of overall impressions uh, of the demo and, and how you felt about it in the end? Um, I really, really enjoyed the game. Okay. It was a lot of fun to play. Just having felt like you were very powerful, getting to craft the spells, sling them around and everything. Um, the couple of things I noticed were it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to to, to open the inventory and start actually crafting the spells. Mm, okay. And as soon as I did that, I'm like, ah, this is this is worth it. Because I saw the the ability zooming, you know, flashed up on the top right. of the screen and everything, but it, it took me a while to figure out um, how to get into the that crafting. Okay, we'll get back to the crafting stuff shortly. But how far in would you say you were before you uh, figured that out? Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so you're a good long way in. Like, you had a ton of stuff in your inventory. Oh, yeah, so time. I was able to, like, just take a few minutes to, like, craft everything okay. all at once. Okay. It was before I had gotten the three more spells, though. It was when okay. I still had so just, why like, just ice and fire. Okay, good deal. Travis, what, what was your overall impression? I quite enjoyed it. I found three spells that really worked together. So I was able to spill through everything really fast, but I still got killed because I wouldn't hear the enemy come up behind me. Just okay. And didn't really help so out. what was your, your magical combination of magic that worked well for Ice you? Ice bolt, gravity well, and the lightning storm. Interesting. Okay, so you two were... Two AOEs and one bolt. Well, and getting up until that point, because it's not until after you, you defeat that undead lieutenant, uh, kind of maybe at the halfway point of the demo that, that we give you the gravity and the lightning and the corruption. What were you using to get you through up until that point? I didn't know about the, the other spells up at that point, so the only thing I had was the fire The spells. fire, okay. So I was just crap, like getting them to a spot while we hit them with the AOE. Okay. 
And then so it point. was after you took that guy out that you started messing around with the crafting yep. components? Okay. Hank, what did you think? Um, I thought it was pretty polished as far as, uh, like, the d overall direction. Um, as, as far as, like, uh, the spells and stuff goes, I was... I was c kind of concerned at first because there was no, there's no like ridicule. I don't have like <laughs> an aim or even you know, like a little dot in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, but that that went away after I started noticing a few of the the visual cues, uh, like the, I mean obviously the homing. Like once I noticed that happen, um, uh, my worries went away a little bit. Uh, and then I guess eventually at the like at the end when I went back for my second playthrough. Uh, and there's the gravity bubble, like where that hovers, and um, and I I didn't realize until um, maybe it was my second playthrough also that uh, like holding down uh, like you could charge uh, your spells, mm. um, and that would have been useful. <laughs> <laughs> sure, uh, but that was. Uh, for, as far as crafting goes, uh, as I, uh, I I basically made the strongest targeting firebolt I could, and to keep my distance, and uh, the strongest like um, ice I could, and just made it so they'd stay frozen as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And I would just uh, uh, this is before I got the other powers. Um, I, I would just. Um, fireball as much as I could mm -hmm. and then when I got close ice them back away fireball 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 okay um, and then I went. that's an effective combination yeah <laughs> so if um, if you could have your druthers like now that you've gotten used to it a little bit more would you still oh hmm. um, <laughs> yeah sorry about that <laughs> that's okay no um yeah, I don't know if my ringer is off. Yeah, mine's <laughs> off now. Um, <laughs> I did that about halfway through. Realized I should do that. Now that you've gotten used to it, Hank, would you still prefer to have an aiming reticle? Would that help? Um, I would. I don't know. I I think be, because anything that's any kind of distance, yeah, is homing, mm -hmm. then it wasn't a problem, and then. It looked like anything that was AOE had some kind of right you, an in-world element yeah. for yeah. So I got it. used to it. Um, yeah, I mean I prefer like as little on the screen as possible. So. Now, did you stick with your your fire ice combo like throughout the demo, or did you mess around with some of the other stuff? Um, the only other thing that I did uh, first time around is uh, I forgot what, the, what are the bugs called corruption corruption. Yeah, corruption. Uh, I would I. I made one uh, corruption spell that had a really high curse, and so um, I would freeze, and then I would corrupt, um, and then I would fire. Okay. And then that was. Then I didn't mess with spells after that because I thought I'd like I had, I didn't need out. anything else. Okay. So, <laughs> even on the boss. Did on everybody on the have that same kind of experience where it was basically a set of three that worked for you? Chris, I was you constantly that? switching out, just trying new things. Okay. My favorite part was just trying out different combinations and um, just seeing what everything did. Yeah. Um, there were there's some I still wasn't entirely sure what they did. Some like tooltips or descriptions or something might have been helpful there. Yeah, what, kind no. of, what spell uh, do you recall specifically? Um, I'm not sure what it did. At first, the gravity well, I, I couldn't okay. quite figure out. The, the AoE gravity. Okay. Um, corruption, I couldn't quite figure out. It said that it got damage on stacks, so I, I kind of figured that meant if I just kept hitting them with the spell over and over again, it would stack more. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't positive about that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Communicating what they're doing via VFX is something that we're focusing on. That's yeah. why I'm asking. Okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, Gravity and Corruption are both um, the next tier of advancement at spells. Okay. Um, more potent, but if you can't see what they're doing, then, then you know, we, we have to fix that. Mm -hmm. And I also had a little bit of trouble figuring out the, um, 
I don't know what you call them, the runes or the, uh, the, the effects that increase. Um, the augments. The augments. I couldn't quite figure out. Sometimes they would work on one spell but not on another, and I had trouble figuring out which ones would work on which. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. The mapping uh -huh. between the attributes and those augments. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, just a tangent a little bit. Travis, I watched you um, approach the water, <laughs> examine the water. I'm not making fun here in any way. I tried. Uh, and, then, uh, and then you went into the water, right? It killed you. I did the same thing. <laughs> did you? Okay, so you're not alone, obviously. I, and it's really hard to ask this question without sounding sort of condescending or something. Believe me, I'm not. I'm purely curious. <laughs> What was going through your head when you jumped in the water? <laughs> I wanted to see what was at the bottom of it at that point in time. Okay. I couldn't freeze it. It was bubbling. Uh -huh. And nothing popped out at me at the time okay. for a good bit. I shot an ice ball, fireball, and I did flash freeze on it. So you tried the last thing that you could try, which was going see in. See what was in it. I was thinking, <laughs> hmm, maybe there's a secret area over here with some hidden augments. And, and if you get, so you knew that that wasn't like the main path, right? Or no? No. You, you, I had no idea. Oh, that's so why, you, that's you when I first that got there. I looked okay. both ways. Like, I see frozen path that looked like it just carved off at a wall. Okay. And I saw this one that kept going. It's like, okay, but there's water in front of me. So maybe I spell flash freezes it or... You just swim, you swim over. So you're at the over. point where you thought that was the direction to go, and because I think you're at the point where then if you had hung a right, which apparently you couldn't see that you could go that way, but that's where you get to the last combat encounter before you make your way to the boss, right? I saw it. I saw okay. it when I went through because mm -hmm. it's like right there, yeah, on your right side, like it's kind of split off. But so you saw I two the forks, left. and you're like, I'm gonna go left. Okay. Yeah, I think the left one interests me because yeah. I saw the water bubbling. So. And I don't. I don't think we have anything else in that little alcove. So maybe that's part of the. The, uh, the boundary is too severe. Um, we need to push it out and actually give people a little bit better uh, heads up. It is a boundary, but yeah. right mm -hmm. now it's it's maybe uh, you know. And maybe of, maybe even having something for you to grab down there would mm -hmm. help you feel like it served its purpose. <laughs> yeah, because I always <laughs> I always go for the wrong path first in <laughs> games. But then you, know, you start all, second guessing yourself and saying, "Okay, if I wanted to go to that one, I'll go to this one." <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll try to find all the secret areas before going to the main path. Yeah, it really shocked me. So Just and, and you know, I saw it happen. I was like, "Oh man!" And now he's got to fight his way all the way yes. back there. <laughs> so was that a moment of frustration for you? No, no. I didn't expect to have to fight again. But yeah, okay. the, the, the sudden death shocked me. Gotcha. Like, okay. I have expected Don't touch it. the water anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you knew you were taking a certain calculated risk at that point. All right. Hank, did you have any experiences like that? Um, well, I did go to that area, but uh, after using all my spells just to see if there was, like, the homey one in particular, if there was, like, a crystal or something I couldn't see. Mm. Um, and then, but it just kind of looks like a, like a boss space, like, because it's big, okay. and then it looked like you could walk on the water. There's kind of a like lot of ice response. floating in it or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And, I mean, that's just kind of what it looked like. I didn't, I didn't walk in the water. Uh, I turned around. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I mean, if, if we were psychologists, I'm sure we would get some interesting info out of that decision making. Um, so let's talk about the enemies that, that you guys fought. And we, we can talk about the boss a little bit later. But, um, you know, who stood out? Like, was there anybody that was particularly difficult or particularly cool in your minds? I thought the whip guys were cool. They were oh, yeah. really interesting. It, I, I haven't seen anything like that in a game before, really. It's okay. one that, like, pulls you in to attack. Yeah. Um, and there are actually a couple times where they, like, pulled me away from attack an attack. Oh, they saved you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but having that, uh, um, what do you call it? The, da or the, the blink. The blink. That was just a lot of fun to zoom in and out of combat using that. Um, how far in were you before you figured out the blink? I figured out right away. Yeah. I I pressed the uh, F1 to bring up the help and saw that. I'm like, ooh, blink, what's that do? I never got that. Like, I mean, I don't I don't get how to use it still. I mean, I saw it at the very beginning, mm -hmm. the F1 tip thing. Who feels like an expert on blink who can explain I, to Hank how it works? I just love it. It was like an enemy's right in your face if you were... Like, I, I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but it always seemed to work. And yeah. I would blink backwards away from them, like, as soon as they're about to attack me. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't do that. Whatever direction you're holding, 
Yeah. You can only hold one direction or whatever. When you're holding, you hit space, you'll blink that direction. Yeah. So it's for, you can use it for a quick evasive or just traveling. Right. So there were times where, like, I would start to catch a spell, let press blink, and then as I was blinking back, the spell would go off in their face. Um, and I would not be in their face. Two potential things. I don't know if it if it could have had an effect on it, but uh, run is on a toggle, right? And if you're running, you can't blink. And so it's possible that you hit shift and you're in run mode, and then you're unable to blink. And if you didn't hit it again, uh, the other thing is blink is on a cooldown, but we don't really communicate that. So it's possible that you would blink once and then try to blink again quickly, and it wouldn't work. So it would seem inconsistent to you. I was just I, I don't know. I was. Sometimes I would jump, and other times I didn't seem like I was moving. Yeah. Okay. But it would always slow down time, mm. I guess. <laughs> okay, yeah, if so you're against a wall, then you can blink at that direction. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We're going to have to review the tape and see like exactly like, what, what Hank was doing. I think the character said something like, I can't go that way, or something like that. Oh, yeah? When you were against a wall. Maybe. Uh, or maybe it was just an enemy talking. That's possible. Enemy. Interesting. Yeah. Some of the enemies weren't very vocal, and they would shock me because I'll be, once I get to the second area, I'll start looking back behind me because <laughs> throughout the first area, I'll be fighting someone in front of me, and all of a sudden, melee just hits. It was hitting me. <laughs> and I was like, two melee guys behind me is like in my face, like, oh man. Yeah. And you mentioned that, I think, early, like when you were talking about your overall experience, there were times when you would just get whacked and, and not realize that somebody was there. Did you guys have that happen at all? Uh, I did, but for for the range guys, I guess the art, mm. the undead archers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the bone, the magic, and I couldn't f I couldn't find them for a while because they yeah. shoot from so far away. Mm -hmm. um, but that was Metro did help making it find them where they were, but they shot pretty fast too. Yeah, so they made it harder to dodge in the the living ones. In general, did you guys find the uh, ranged combatants or the close ranged uh, combatants? Which one was more difficult? The close range. The ranged. Interesting. <laughs> they uh, the only time I died, the boats. I died in the water. I died yeah. to the mages that were shooting like magic missiles or something like that. They were fun, by and I died to the boss ones. Okay. And I definitely had more trouble like trying to figure out how to maneuver to get the range guys because I was just blinked away from the. Close so guys. just so I'm clear, real quick. Range, range, close ranged. I would say mage. Mm -hmm. and that's melee an for me. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Majority, majority of the enemies, they had shields where they yep. would absorb the hits. Yep. Oh, but you use it strong enough. You didn't know spell. that you could charge. Or yeah, I, I knew I was charging. Oh, you didn't know you could charge. Yeah, I didn't know right. until okay. later. Because most of the enemies, if you didn't charge your attacks, they, they would just block absorb it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it made, it made it more difficult, and that's why I enjoyed about it. Right. Okay. You guys are, I think, the first group that we haven't given any instruction to whatsoever, so that's kind of like an important milestone for us that you guys were all able to complete the demo without, and you know, nobody asked for help at any point, right? Um, so that's cool for us, but and then it, it also helps to accentuate because when you play that long and then you realize that there was a feature there that you didn't know about, it sticks in your head and you bring it up rather than us laying over your shoulder and saying, oh, if you hold the button down longer, you'll get the, the attack. So partially by design that we had you guys play that way, um, but it's also semi-embarrassing that, that you, didn't, uh, you the, didn't know. We want you to know how to do that stuff. For a little while, I didn't know, or I had forgotten about the AoE, okay. the long-range AoE. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I actually thought to figure out how to use it was from the last time I playtested a year ago. Oh, like, okay. oh, there was a third attack. Interesting. This is before I had figured out the, the inventory. Is that because, okay, be, and the, um, well, did you know, because the AOE initially for the fire spells is mapped to the, the two mouse buttons Yeah, together. I figured out, like, I tried, um, like, middle clicking, and then I tried looking to see if there were other buttons on the mouse, and then I tried the two clicking together. So it was primarily a controls issue and not a... Well, I, and I didn't even know. I wouldn't have known it was there at first. Yeah. If okay. it weren't that I had played it before. That makes sense. Did you guys discover the AoE? Yeah, I just the the help one the told help. me old dress up. Okay. Okay. And I frequently used it. Once I figured out you can mm -hmm. you can charge the AoE three times. It'll do it once and then it'll get a little bit stronger for the final form. Mm -hmm. Were you using the AoE tank? Nope. AoE <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> for boats. <laughs> uh, I mean like I had AoE. I just you found the combination, right? Like, that was just working for you. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. 
Um, so let's talk about crafting a little bit more. Um, I'm curious about things like, did it make sense? Was it easy to use? Did you like using it? Did you feel like the spells that came out of it were better than the spells that you had before? Did it encourage experimentation? All that kind of stuff. Just, you know, what comes to your mind about the crafting system? I really liked the color coding that it matched up with familiar. Mm -hmm. the, the green, blue, purple, orange yeah. was familiar. So what did that mean? Because I, <laughs> I didn't understand what it meant, but it did help you tell which which ones were argumented over the normal ones. So basically, you know, the color coding scheme is, you know, the tiers of rarity. Uh, and okay. so the, the basic ones are white and they, they don't have a, a color appended to them. And then uh, what's it goes to green, green blue, blue, and then orange, uh, purple. Orange, purple. Orange, purple. Um, and so we saw some purples dropping out there. I don't know. I if had more purples than oranges. Some. Interesting. I had, I had one orange and three purples. I oh, no, it, it goes purple-orange, right? Orange is the most... Orange is, like, the legendary. I'm pretty okay. sure. Even That's so, how the it was fact that you had multiple purples <laughs> and multiple oranges is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah it was, it was pretty easy lovely. to get. I only have the blue. Blue is the highest I got. <laughs> it's just uh, the random numbers didn't smile upon you. Um, so, but I, I assume that that might have made a difference. The fact purple that... Orange. Just checking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that... Uh, that you, it wasn't clear and we weren't explaining the rarity levels, Did were you still able to kind of figure out that, okay, this one is going to be better than that one based on the stats? Uh, no, I mean, kind of. I mean, it, not by the color so much. Sure. I, was look, I was reading the names. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and you, you would see like plus five curse or whatever and right. kind of use that sort of stuff. Did that make sense? Like it, when you were sort of starting to put this, a spell together, did you have a good handle on, okay, if I use this particular augment, then it's going to do this as opposed to that augment, like mousing over them? Did that tell you what was going it on? It helped with the indication next to the numbers that tell you what it did. Yeah. But having so many and they're not being stacked on each other, it was a little bit difficult to yeah. get the same effects for certain spells. Mm -hmm. So if, if you had a two plus two destructions and they're just like in two different places in the list or whatever, that yeah, like, like I pretty different. much had to, had to drag them in to, and see what it did okay. at the end compare. And that was a little bit clunky. Okay. So trying to figure out like, okay, so I definitely get the clunky part. I'm wondering what the thought process is. Like what you're you're going through, just walk me through like how you would try to craft a spell and where you would run into points where you're like, oh. Well, it was usually like, I was trying to, I was looking at the corruption. Yeah. And I was trying to figure out a way to um, increase the likelihood of the bugs. Yeah. And I couldn't find, I, I guess I didn't have any augments that could do that. And I, you know, just kind of swapped out each one to figure out which one would do it. Um, mm -hmm. So, in were that the tooltips there helping at all with the sort of the green and red and yeah, giving you an idea what? Um, the, the, yeah, those sort of things did help. I think I think it was just that I didn't have the augment that I needed, oh, okay. and it was hard to figure out which one I did need. Gotcha. And I would like put in a fire spell, and I would have like a long list of augments, and then I put in the corruption, and I have like two. And I started to figure out, like, um, I guess because I could never see all the ones I had. I gotcha. Um, There's a, a sorting feature there mm -hmm. that's intended to help you get to the augments you require quickly. Yeah. <clears throat> but I see what you're saying. There's kind of a hole there. If there's nothing that you can use after you've built this, you know, core and a blue shape, and ah, yeah. I don't have an augment. So you feel like there should be another step where it's, Tell me what mm -hmm. I'm missing. I gotcha. Yeah, that's interesting. I actually didn't know there was a sorting feature in for the crafting community. Well, it's it's kind of, unless it automatically did it. It's sly. Yeah, it's kind of sitting <laughs> there doing it for you. Okay. Once you've put your core and your shape in for the spell, then the only augments mm -hmm. that you're going to see are ones that work for that spell. Uh -huh. But, you know, obviously the issue is if there's a, an augment that you're missing, mm -hmm. you won't know that it's not there, right? So if you needed a curse augment to do that or whatever it was, and, but you don't have one, then you'll just kind of look around and say, mm, I guess I can't do what I, what I want to do. So what was, Travis, what was your experience with crafting? Um, when I first started, I realized how to get the different elements off the bat because they're right there. Yeah. But the arguments, I didn't understand at first because mm -hmm. I was thinking the first set was you would use one and then you could use another one in the augmentation slot. But I didn't realize they were runes that 
told you how many augmentation slots you obtained okay. from that. So I tried that, and then I figured out after the first time, oh, it didn't work. Just see what this, the list at the bottom does, and I figured out after that. Once you once you could sort of had it figured out, were you able to go in? Like, would you? And this is kind of open to all of you guys. Would you ever get to a point where you'd see, oh, I got new loot that I just picked up, and it seemed fancy. So let me go in and see what I can make with it. And at that point, once you'd been through the process a couple of times, were you able to jump in and sort of quickly make a spell, or were you still kind of fumbling around in the menu a little bit? I was able to make a spell pretty fast, but on, on obtaining the different augmentations and runes. I didn't really go back in to see what they did. Okay. Because at that point, I was when I was first told about it, I kind of just made my spells and then went and played with that. When I got more stuff, I didn't feel like I needed to go back because mm -hmm. nothing would have changed much because gotcha. I was giving it more damage or a better status effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did anybody have an experience where you made a new spell and then you're like, oh yeah, this is way better than what I had before when you used it in the game? Um, and I, I'm, I'm talking more about um, like making a new fire spell that's better than your last, say your blast spell, versus like a whole new gravity spell that you've never seen before. You know, right before, I, well, I went and fought the boss and I died the first time. The second time, I decided to make some spells specifically for the fight. Okay. So I went in and made a freeze spell that had like a 10 second freeze or something like that. Interesting. How did that work out? And for then you? a fire storm that did like tons of damage. So I that freeze it in place you, right? and then. Firestorm on top of it and okay. dash away. How about you guys? Do you have anything along those lines? Um, when I was testing out the ice spells, like the ice spell, I had to, I had made an argument to ice spell before I actually tried out the, the original one. And I was using it against enemies, and I tried out the original one, and I was noticing the difference between them. Mm -hmm. Like the one I I had crafted was either instantly killing some enemies, mm -hmm. while the other while the original one would just be deflected by some of the range it was, it was interesting. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. So uh, in watching you guys play, um, it seemed like you know, there was a lot of love for targeted spells. AoE was second. Now, Cone, how did the, the close range attacks feel to you? Or were they, were they worthwhile at all? I enjoyed the fire one most out of corruption and gravity. Okay. Well, let me phrase it. I loved the gravity one most because it would push him back. Yeah. I yeah. like that one most. That was my second playthrough. I didn't get to play with that cone more much. Gotcha. But out of the, the ones I played in my first playthrough, mm -hmm. I had I used corruption and fire, and I liked the corruption more and more than the fire. Hank, uh, well, I didn't really use AoE. I used the close close range one. Okay. Uh, like uh, I would freeze. Like if there were no range in me, I would freeze them in front of me, and just you know, right in front of me, just blast them. So. Gotcha. Okay. Were you using kind of much? Um, for the most part, yeah. I would, you'd, I would like hit them with a targeted corruption, mm -hmm. and then I would do a, a gravity cone to finish them off. Usually. Okay. So we're running out of time. A couple of quick questions about the boss. Um, when he would go down on all fours, right? If if you saw that happen, it might not have happened to everybody. Mm -hmm. Um. But did you notice that happening, and what did that mean to you? Like, how did you interpret that? It was Low before he dashed at you. Two bits. Because there were two instances when he went on all fours. One when he would run at you, and one when he was weakened. Mm -hmm. And when one when he was weakened, blow him two bits. So he was vulnerable <laughs> at that point. Like, that's what you needed to do, is wail on him. When he ran at me, though, I freaked out. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I couldn't figure out if I should have blinked this way, because even if I blink, he would turn yeah. mid, like, really fast. Like, oh, man. It was... Just hard and half time I was back against the wall, so I couldn't blink back away from him. Did you guys see him in, in that state at all, or just kind of like down on all fours? Not um, I usually just anticipated it as he's gonna charge at me. Okay, I didn't realize that. It I would always run up to him and freeze him. <laughs> point. Interesting. Okay, and then he would actually freeze. I mm -hmm. didn't. I didn't. Re I realized he froze when he went down, but I didn't understand why he didn't when he was running around. Okay. So he would have this mode where he would charge at you and, and do other stuff. Um, what was that mode all about? His, the one when he was going green? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard it at the very beginning of the fight. The woman that's following you says he's invulnerable to ice and lightning spells when he's enraged. And my mind, 
excuse my French, was fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the two spells I had, one made the of gravity well, but mine went fuck. Uh, quote of the playtest. <laughs> it's like, he's a word with this when he's enraged. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? That's the, the I Griffin. heard it, but I, I, well, I heard her say something in lightning. And, and I you're thought, like, I should use lightning. Well, no, no. <laughs> I thought it, that she might have been say, uh, might have said corruption because I was trying to throw corruption at him and it didn't look like it was sticking. Okay. So that's why, I, and then I switched to something else. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, at least you got it. Got you thinking about maybe he's not going to react yeah. the same way to everything. How about you, Hank? Well, I misheard her because I thought she said that he was weak to the <laughs> But it didn't matter because right. I just used uh, the fireball and kept my distance and then I would kind of the same technique I used for everything. Yeah, <laughs> I beat him. The fire spells helped me beat him. So my original set, I got stomped. Mm. I died and came back and I just had all, I just went, went to the first set you started off with and was able to beat him. Mm. Gotcha. Hank, did you die at all when you fought him? No. Got him on the first try. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't see him charge until the very end, though. And oh, really? I remember watching that, actually. I was like, oh, maybe he's going to go down. But, but It was more of the green missiles that got me than his charging. Because mm -hmm. there, there wasn't really much cover to hide behind or anything. Right. So. It's all about blinking out of the way with those. He Gosh. will throw more of them if he's in his enraged state. Uh. So the, the way that enraged works is that if you use your crowd control spells or spells that have crowd control components like freezing him or stunning him or whatever which you know lightning gravity uh ice i'll do a bunch of that he's got a, a sort of hidden meter that fills as you do more of that to him and then eventually he'll get tipped into his enrage mode and then you can't freeze him at all and he's going to be much more aggressive gotcha. did that seem clear in any way to any of you guys based on that playthrough it seemed like travis at, was maybe getting it at the more he at the more you hit him with certain spells that he got enraged yeah not really because you know, really, okay that one didn't. That one didn't stand out. But gotcha. I did notice when I hit him with too many ice or my ice spells, he did. He did do that. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Tim, do you have anything else you want to ask before we're out of time? Um, I guess the last thing for me was just uh, general pacing of the combat. Did it feel like there was uh, too much pressure, not enough pressure, or you know, it felt like you had a decent amount of time to kind of uh, play through at your own pace? Well, the demo since you're going linear through it um mm -hmm. i would say it's, I, for me i would say it's just enough okay because it's not something like i felt like i'll just pause and i'll be fine mm -hmm. or it was that kind of dark souls feel or <laughs> if i don't get out of here i'm gonna die <laughs> <laughs> so I, I enjoyed it quite a bit okay um how about you um i think the pacing was good uh the same like there were enough encounters and they were spread out enough that, um, you know, in between you could kind of enjoy the scenery. Okay. Um, okay. I really like your environments. Um, yeah. They're really well built. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you want more, don't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> <through> <laughs> Hank was not challenged. <laughs> I wouldn't play it again. It was a, he just threw fire to everything hard. Yep. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel like because I could pretty much spam everything mm -hmm. uh, that I, don't know, I guess it wasn't challenging like everything just kind of steadily went through so mm -hmm. there was no like stopping to think as far as combat goes mm -hmm. I, I did because um, at the very beginning I didn't understand how like you know how attacking worked as far as like people attacking so me so I didn't know like the health meter and like what it took to die so I did die at the very very beginning mm -hmm. um, but then after that I kind of noticed the whole crystals thing so then uh, once I got a hold of all the systems and stuff um, it kind of just it went really it, it seemed like it should have gone fast but it went really slow okay um, but it did go steady so. gotcha okay I am seriously considering adding one charger to every encounter in that entire level. Yeah, as, as we were receiving Hank's answer, all Tim can think about is how do I kill Hank? I need to kill Hank. <laughs> <laughs> I need Hank to that. Not you as a person, you in the game, right? Um, so we're out of time. Um, we really, really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, we've learned a great deal from watching you guys play. 
we're really excited that you were willing to take time out of your days and, and make the effort to come out here. Um, you know, we're trying to grow a, a little community, and we hope that you guys will be a part of it and hopefully come back, see how this game transforms over the coming months because without input from people like you, we can't really, you know, make the game as good as, as we want it to be. So thanks again for that, and I think we'll officially call this playtest over. Yep. Great. Thank you all very much. Thank you. These, uh... Good night, folks. Thank you.